Silicone molds are not cheap, and neither are dogs. Especially if you have multiple silicone molds to create your concrete jar. The great thing is they can last a very long time if you care for them properly. Let's talk about how to clean them, when to clean them, how to store them, and what not to do. Here's a fun fact. If for some reason you decided to purchase a silicone mold and you let your silicone mold sit on a shelf and did absolutely nothing with it, why would you do that? You would find that it would last about 20 years, give or take, depending on the type of silicone. That's a long time. Hi, my name is Jay Catalan. Let's assume you're creating concrete jars. The very first time I get a silicone mold, I give it a quick cleaning to make sure I get off any oily deposits or debris that might be left on it from the manufacturer. I take a little dish soap and dilute it with water and give it a nice quick cleaning, making sure that all the oily deposits or soap is cleaned off. Then I take a lint-free towel and dry it thoroughly and carefully. Do not use paper towels as they are rough and too abrasive and will ultimately dull your silicone mold. Make sure you get into the crevices of your silicone mold as water likes to hide in places like that. The last thing you need are water deposits forming on your silicone mold. Once it's dry, it's ready for use. After demolding your concrete jar and admiring it, Wait a minute, if you think this video is inspirational, creative, educational with a little bit of entertainment, please subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. It would really help me out a lot. Thanks. It's time to clean your silicone mold. I like to clean them right away, unless I'm going to refill my silicone mold immediately after demolding, as I don't want anything sticking around too long on it and possibly becoming a permanent part of my silicone mold. First step I do is fill my utility sink with lukewarm water and dish soap and let it soak for a few minutes. That usually loosens up any cement residual pigment or acrylic paint left behind after demolding. Then, after letting it soak, I run my fingers around the silicone mold to see if I can agitate and remove any cement residue or colorant. If I notice the silicone mold isn't as clean as I need it to be, I will use a non-abrasive sponge to clean it more thoroughly. Don't use a scouring pad or Brillo pad to clean your silicone mold. It will dull, scratch, and ultimately ruin your silicone mold. No! If I still see that the silicone mold is holding onto any residue or colorant, I sometimes, and reluctantly, use a little rubbing alcohol diluted in water to remove any excess waste. I say reluctantly because rubbing alcohol can ultimately ruin your silicone mold if you don't use it sparingly. That means if the thorough cleaning didn't do the trick, and it usually does, then I go to a little rubbing alcohol diluted in water. Do not use 91% rubbing alcohol directly on your silicone mold. Doing so in the long run will ultimately destroy your silicone mold. Ah! Also, because I create a lot of concrete candle jars, test a lot of various products, I wear gloves and a mask and sometimes my trusty respirator if I use rubbing alcohol to remove any stubborn stains. Why? You are exposing yourself to cement, pigments, sealants, and other chemicals along the creative process. Overexposure to these chemicals, including rubbing alcohol, can cause a skin rash, itching, dryness, and redness. It can also irritate the nose and the throat, and repeated high exposure can cause headaches and dizziness, confusion, loss of coordination, unconsciousness, and even death. Ah! I know that sounds morbid, but if you are watching this video right now to carefully take amazingly awesome super duper care of your silicone mold, then you can tolerate me caring enough about you so you can take amazingly awesome super duper care of, well, you! But I digress. Then, once I am happy with how clean my silicone mold is, I will lightly clean it again, if and only if I use rubbing alcohol. Using some soapy water to remove any of the leftover alcohol that might be left on my silicone mold. After I am done thoroughly cleaning it, I will take a lint-free towel and carefully dry it. I say carefully because you do not want to overly squeeze, bend, and twist your silicone mold as that is a very rough process that your silicone mold has to go through during the demolding process. Process. The last thing you want to do is manipulate it in that same manner while you are cleaning and drying it. Once the inside is thoroughly dry, I turn my silicone mold back to its normal position and thoroughly dry it on the outside, making sure I get into the corners and the crevices of my silicone mold. Do not drip dry, air dry, or dry your silicone mold out in the sun. Sun, although good for a lot of things, it's not good for your silicone mold. 
Then, once it's dry, I dry my hands as they too are wet and give my silicone mold another look both on the inside and outside, making sure I don't see any leftover water. Silica in the silicone mold absorbs moisture, so you want to make sure your silicone mold is dry. Once I know it's dry, I place it on a paper towel in its upright position in a cool and dry place. What is a cool and dry place? A cool and dry place is a place that is approximately 60 to 75 degrees. You don't want it to be in 40 degree weather or 90 degree weather. Also, do not stack your silicone molds, lay them down, or put their lids on top of each other. Doing so will warp your silicone mold forever, changing the shape of it, which will change the look of your concrete creation. No bueno. Now, any mistakes you make along the way isn't necessarily going to destroy your silicone mold overnight but persistent misuse will ultimately ruin your silicone mold, which will render it useless for life. Ah! And as you might already know, not all silicone mold is made the same, and some silicone molds are made with cheaper quality silicone. But the more you take care of your silicone mold, the longer you will have it, to create awesome concrete cannel jars like these right here. And take a look at these videos that are popping up right now. They're gonna help you on your concrete cannel jar making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ciao.